What's up, gamers? Today, I want to show you how the idea I've came up with on how to create a currency system and a shop in the new grounded playground mode. Hello, see through from the future here. I want to let you know that at exactly the 10 minute and six second mark of this video, I decided that I wanted to make a vending machine question mark random generation machine, right? Which isn't really possible. It is possible. Uh, but I couldn't figure it out in this video. So from 10 minutes to 20 minutes, it looks good, but it doesn't work. So I apologize, but I'm gonna leave it in the video anyway, but I will leave a link in the description for Max Fox gaming's randomizer. He got it figured out. So I am going to upload this video and go finish watching his so I can learn how to make a randomizer. You guys be good. Like subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. In case you're setting up an RPG of sorts or an MMO or something like that where you uh, need a currency system in a shop, you could also use this in mini games as well. I've got uh, a little example on my mini game world of a way to utilize this, but we're going to get started here. So we have our little counter, right? Like our, our sales counter or we got our salesman and then we've got pretty much our, our board of what we want to sell. So... Uh, with that being said, we're going to grab a few things. Let's say that we're going to make this a, let's make it a tool shop. Okay. So we're going to have, we're going to have a peblet axe, an insect axe, a termite axe. We're going to have a peblet hammer, insect hammer, black ox hammer. And then we're going to have a acorn shovel and a black ant shovel. Wait, there's a rotten black ant shovel. That's weird. I didn't know that that existed. Um, anyway, so. We now have our tools, right? So we're going we're going to want to place them all um, accordingly. So let's see here. We want to here. How do I want to do this the best way possible here? And we'll just we'll just set them right on top of these these little situations. So we got that one. Then we grab this one. Okay. Just kind of display them however you want, right? This is the easy part. This is the easy part. Okay. Maybe here, and then the last one can go here like this. Okay, so essentially, you get the drift, right? You organize them, you put them on here however you want to. Uh, um, easy peasy. You want them displayed so that you can see, you know, what you want to purchase, more or less. So at this point, uh, you have to think about this as well because we're going to have, not currently, but we will have a player blocking volume here uh, so that, you know, the player can't access these these weapons that are just sitting on the shelf or whatever. All right, so we do that there, that there. Okay, so also if you have your salesman wearing some armor, you might want to put him further back or put this player volume further back uh, one way or the other, either way. Uh, but we're going to move this for now, but just to give you guys kind of an idea of how this works. So we're going to be using targets. Uh, here we go like this. And... We'll put them down here since we're not utilizing the space. It's fine. Okay. And here's the thing. You have to decide what you want to use for a currency, and then you have to limit that in whatever game you have. So, for instance, if you want to use arrows, make it to where the player has no way whatsoever to craft arrows unless you want them to. Uh, uh, same thing with peblets. In my MMO world, I'm using uh, peblets. So, more or less, you can gather pebbles in certain areas. And pebblets are also one of the quest rewards uh, so that you can spend them at the shop. So more or less, really simple. Uh, we'll do a thing that pretty much allows us to have that cost one, right? So we'll make the pebblet axe and the pebblet hammer cost one. So we'll go, we'll go ahead and set out all six of our inventory fillers here. Now, I highly suggest to not use the equippers uh, because sometimes the equippers, I don't know if it's a bug or what, but it will completely replace what you have equipped and get rid of what else is in your inventory. So you got to be careful with that. So I use the inventory fillers here instead of the item equipper just for more for safety precaution reasons. So now at this point we have all of our inventory fillers out, which is going to be what's going to give us our thing. Uh, we are also going to then um, get a condition counter. So what this is going to do is we're going to say once it's greater than zero, the value changes. So additionally, more or less, we can set up kind of a test here real quick. Uh, and this will show us that let me get a bow and then let me get a bunch of arrows and then just a chest 
to put it in. Okay, so we'll put all these in there. Deposit stack. Everything you're doing along the way, it doesn't matter if you're doing this, something else, whatever. Um, you want to make sure that you test it along the way because there's a lot of times that it just won't work. Um, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and just do that there. And we're going to take all of this and equip our bow. And we should get... Yeah, we get this every time. Every time that we hit it. Okay, that's what that greater than and value condition does there is it makes it to where every time it's greater than zero uh it produces a signal so this is all you need to do for a single a single cost item thing right so you put this here oh did it just crash that's new i think it crashed i'll be right back all right luckily it saved it like right here that's crazy i don't know why it crashed i wonder if it'll do it again i hope not i would like to complete this video please um, so our greater than goes to here, our inventory filler. Okay. And then we put our pebblet axe in there. So now, uh, uh, you know, once again, run another test, make sure everything's good. Uh, I grab this out of here, equip our bow and nice. Every time we hit it, we get a pebblet axe. Okay. So essentially it's the same thing for when you want to charge more. So we could set up this exact same scenario. So we'll copy our greater than zero. And then we'll hold down G. Oops. So it removes all the links. And then we'll take our pebblet hammer, run it to here, and then run this to our... Oop, that's the wrong one. To our inventory filler. Open the inventory filler. Pebblet hammer in. And then, you know, try and stay as organized as you possibly can because this can become a mess with all this wiring and stuff. It's a really good idea to try and stay as organized as possible. All right. So for two and three, we are going to do equals two um let's see here so let's copy this i'm gonna snap it okay so we need a total of actually let's edit one let's edit one of them uh because this is gonna be equal to two and value change okay equal to two and value change same thing okay now we want to do it equal to three uh let's go equal to three value change okay perfect um so essentially what we're gonna do here is once once we hit the target twice, okay, so come over here. We hit the target twice. What's going to happen is a few different things. So we are going to, we're going to hit a switch that is going to also hit a our inventory filler. So we can grab our inventory filler here, okay? And this is going to hit this, and then we need to reset this back to zero, okay? So we go to set value zero, and this is exactly how this works. You hit the target, it is looking for two hits once the two hits happen then we're going to get two things that happen here number one we're going to give the player the item and number two we're going to activate the switch gizmo so what we need to do here is we need to change this to activate and then change this to set value so that's going to set value back to zero and essentially reset uh the thing so if we open up the inventory filler here get our insect axe and then we run the game take our stuff out get our bow if we shoot this twice uh wait for the stuff to disappear off the screen okay one two okay we got an insect axe now one two we got another insect axe so that's pretty much how you uh if you want to add multiple currency uh you could essentially do that here so we'll do it we'll do it one more time for the sake of for the sake of uh learning it here uh we'll say something costs 10 arrows okay we'll make it to where the black ox hammer costs 10 arrows um, and if you want it to cost more for whatever crazy reason, you're like really trying to screw with somebody, uh, more or less what you're going to do is you're going to add two of these. So this would essentially be a hundred, right? Cause this would count to 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It would send one signal to here, which would equal one. So it would start this back over again. Um, I can just show you guys how to do that. Just, just for the sake of. Just for the sake of, I'm not even going to freaking shoot the target, but show you how it would be wired up. So what'll happen is our target that we want to hit a hundred times is going to go into this guy. Now, once this equals 10, it's going to give us one signal here and then it's going to reset. So more or less, once this completes, we'll send a signal here and we'll say, actually, hold on. So once, once this gets one. We have to come here and then reset. Well, I guess we don't have to reset that one, do we? Um, we just change this one to value changes, which which will continue to add to it. 
this will continue to add to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. And then once we get to this one here, that's when we, that's when we activate the switch and we activate it. And then we have to reset this one back to zero, just like that. Reset both of these, uh, set value back to zero, set value back to zero and essentially reset it. Right. So then you would just go this way. And that's, if you want to go more than 10 for whatever crazy reason, uh, you really hate your players or something like that. You want to have them hit the target a hundred times. You could potentially do that as well. Uh, now, one last thing I will do is say we have a say we have a mystery item. Okay, so we're gonna set up a marker here with a question mark and just say question mark. Or actually, we don't even need to do that. We'll just make it a question mark and that's it. All right. So say you wanna you wanna set up a mystery box. Okay. So this is our mystery box right here. So if you want a mystery item. We'll say it cost two arrows just to make it a little bit more complicated. Uh, so we're going to copy this guy and we're going to hold G to remove all the connections. All right. And we're going to go from here to here. Now, now what's going to happen is your on. Oh, let me actually try if this works because I'm, I'm, I'm not I've never done this before. So it just makes sense in my brain It just something I thought of all, all of a sudden. So let's take the switch gate and see if I can connect this to the switch gate which I can, um, hold on. How would I select a random item? Mm -mm -mm. We would use a timer and let's see here. Brain's not working. All right. Well, I hate to say it, but after much thought and brain power, trying to figure out how to create a randomizer, um, I don't completely think that any of this will work. Now there is one way to make a randomizer. Uh, Max Fox, shout out to him, actually kind of, kind of made it possible or made it uh, known that you can use pressure plates and a weevil creature spawner to essentially give you a random signal. So we could do it like this real quick. So I'll set these up. Um, let's see here, something like this. So essentially, he had four different things going on, but I think we really just do it with just one deal um next we want to make sure that our weevil can't get out so we'll just grab something uh like a rock let's just grab a rock okay i really think there's a way to make a randomizer with the with the gadgets and gizmos but i just i need to work on it more all right so we're gonna close off all these guys here and what's gonna happen is we're gonna have an at least two we're going to have an at least two brain. So we grab that, change this to at least two. So what will happen at this point is we would need pretty much a, a bag for each one with a random item in it. And it would be, you know, if the weevil is walking on this one and we get a target hit at the same time, then let's see here. So we would need to do... I feel bad because I didn't actually watch this whole video. I, I just kind of seen the concept and watched a little bit and <laughs> continued on with my day. But so if we get at least this panel, we would also need to set all these to freaking low as well. Dang it. All right. So we've got all of our pressure plates changed to low. Um, I lifted these up in the sky a little bit. But at this point, once you get this part done, it's really simple. Um, let me take you over here with this at least two. And we're going to grab our mystery box here. So we'll go to our mystery box. Now, the thing you'll find with with a with a switch gate is you can't, for some reason, input a target into it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this to greater than zero value change, right? This is kind of act as a, acts as a switch for us, uh, more or less is what that's going on there. Uh, so then we can take our t mystery box target and then, and we're just going to call this like a vending machine, right? Because it's going to give us a completely random item at, at a, at a same cost. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to drag this over and then more or less what an at least two gate is, is once that happens and the weevil stepping on a thing happens, I guess there's a very minimal chance that, uh, you know, unless we could stack these a little bit closer, uh, which it kind of looks like we can. Okay. Well, let me do this just to increase our odds of, of actually getting an input here. Let me just do this. Oh, there we go. 
Yeah, the closer together we can get these, the more likely chance that will be that, uh, you know, the Weevil actually steps on it or is stepping on one. Okay, a little finicky, but we can get it. We can get it in there. Okay, that one's being kind of a turd. Mm okay. And you could just do this with four pressure plates, four items, 10 items, 100 items, whatever you want to do it with, man. Whatever you want to do it with, just get these puppies as close as absolutely possible. This is going to automatically ensue into a crazy mess of wires pretty quickly. So as long as you get the basic idea, you'll understand, you know, the concept here. Um, okay. So we got a little gap there, but it's not, oh, it, 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 it. Oh, oh, almost a little bit closer, a little bit closer. All right. It's not going to let us. All right. So we'll pull this in, uh, all the way to the edge. Now, one of the issues you have to worry about is the spawn radius of the creature. So that kind of sucks. So it might be a good idea to spawn them and respawn them and spawn them and respawn them. But essentially we have this at least two. Now, one, now that we have the connection set up, we're just going to go like this all the way around. Okay, now we just have to connect all these foot pads to this, uh, which we can't. So we have to use our we have to use our counter with condition, um, which I'm thinking that we might have to. Okay, this might be a little bit more complicated than than I thought. Um, greater than. All right, so greater than value change. So we're gonna have to go from a greater from the foot pad to a greater than, and then we're gonna have to go to a the at least two but the problem is that i'm thinking of currently is that this also needs to reset every time so we would need a switch as well so we would need to send this to a switch and back so we would need to activate the switch and then the the you know the path back to the greater than we would need need to then set it back to zero um so it would pulse it would go to the switch and reset and yeah, that might work. Maybe. Um, I wish I could organize. I wish I could stack these things. I wish you could like stack them. That would be dope. Cause since I can't, I need to try and find a way to organize this massive mess. So essentially it's a good idea just to stay away from this crazy idea for a randomizer until they come out with a gadget gizmo. That's going to just, you know, give us what we want like a roll of d20 randomizer that would be super cool um also pretty much once we get from there then then we would get the item from that specific pad so like that so yeah you would pretty much have this contraption that i wish i could just copy and paste to every floor uh but i'm gonna work on getting it all filled in and i will be right back once i get it all filled in all right turns out i think i was able to make it a little bit more simple uh, so we just tied each pressure plate to a switch and that switch is set to activate when it's active and deactivate when it's not. So we then send that to the at least two. So we're getting a signal from our target and we're getting a signal from a pad and then we're going to output a random item. So I filled these all with smoothies. So and smoothies and a couple, you know, little meals and a net roast or something. But we're going to try this out. I think it should work. We just need to, the last thing we need to do is put a creature spawner uh, in the middle here. Hope that our area is big enough for this uh, weevil to spawn. So we will just set it to where it starts on start on a timer. Okay. And spawns creatures. And you could even set it on a loop, I guess, if you wanted to continuously like despawn them and respawn them, deep spawn them and respawn them. Uh, let's see here. Start on play and we'll make it instant and let's just see what happens when he walks around over here. Yeah. Okay. So he seems to be getting around just fine too. Now it might, there might be a situation it seems where we would have, we would have two items and then it seems like we might end up with two items, but Hey, you know, sometimes you put your money in and you press E seven and you get two packs of freaking M and M's. All right. This is the best we got. Uh, should work. Should work. Let's go try and see what happens when we shoot the target. Um, oh, that blocking volume's right there. All right, so here we go. For the first time ever, see-through randomizer. All right, for the first time ever, see-through randomizer. Okay, for the first time ever. For the first time ever. All right, where, why is it not working? 
Why is it not working? Uh, we should be getting a signal from here. Here, let's test it. I love these videos because they never go as intended. All right, so it's greater than zero. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Then that should turn on, right? To turn on when I hit it once. Should, 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 should. Okay, so that turns on. So we're getting our signal here, but we're not getting our signal back here from our weevil. That looks like he's successfully walking around. So we'll do one more test here. So I'm not 100% sure why, but after a lot of testing, you can see that I'm getting a signal from here. You can see we're getting our randoms, our at least one of our at least two uh, we're getting from the weevil. But anytime I touch the target, now it did happen once, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I did get something from it one time, but anytime I touch the target, it doesn't give me anything. But it did give it to me one time. I don't understand that. And it is the right target. We're going from here equal to one or greater. And we could just say greater than, which I've already done before. I had tried that as well. See it not work here. Okay. And see, this turns our light on, which means it's accept it's accepting. Oh, see, I just got one. Do I need to, you know, I really thought I was going to be able to figure this out, but it's already been an hour. I've been recording for an hour and a half. So if you have an idea of how we can make this work, let me know. Uh, I might have to do what I originally intended and add in a greater than value increase thing here on a switch that resets itself every time he gets activated, which pretty much was my original design when we were working here. But regardless, I digress. And this video has ended up a whole lot longer than it should have. But if you're still watching, man, I don't know why, but thank you. <laughs> uh, at least we figured out how to do just a simple shop idea. But either way, toodles.